All right, as you can see, this week we're going to do something a little bit different. There's no vice in front of me. Um, if you follow me at all on social media, well, the only social media that I have is Instagram. If you follow that whatsoever, you'll know how much I've been bragging on these dubbing brushes here lately. And it took me a very, very long time to embrace actually doing dubbing brushes. Um, but I'll, t I'll tell you right now, I'm 100% sold on them. 100%. So I put a dubbing brush. This is the Proto that I put together. There was a few things that I didn't like about it. Mainly it was too short. Um, you know, I, these are ones that I've done off of it. These are for the Rainbow Riffles. And um, it works great. Everything's how I want it to be. It's just because this one was so close, and you'll see when I put everything else together, because this was so close to the actual start of the brush, I didn't have enough working room and it seemed like I wasted the first inch and a half to two inches of material and it would just be throwaways. So I lengthened it out a little bit. I got it more how I want it and uh, I'll go through and explain that. To the start, these are about 12 inch brushes. That was about the max I could do. Um, I could push it out to probably 13 or 14, but like I would say, you would lose a little bit on both sides so these I can do a little bit longer um, I 100% recommend some sort of beverage for this because I am not a um, I am not an engineer I am not a carpenter I'm a half-ass carpenter I, I, I know enough to get by uh, I've got all the tools and everything but uh, no I am not a carpenter that is not my forte at all um, it, it's amazing because you know I put in any attention to detail in this uh, build I was frustrated as hell but I can sit down and pick at a fly for you know it seems like hours to, just to get it perfect so it's, it's kind of funny how it doesn't translate over to this I enjoy this stuff as far as like measuring down to like the 16th or the 32nd or any of that no it's not me uh, like I said, enough to be dangerous. I do enjoy it, but not enough to be good or perf be a perfectionist at it. I just don't care that much. Um, anyhow, on with that, you can see on this side over here, we've got a new sticker up there. That's my buddy uh, from back home, Ty and Adam, the Thirsty Outdoorsman. I've been saying I was going to get that sticker up there. I just haven't done it for a while. Finally got around to it. Sorry, Ty. Um, Ty and Adam, Adam came out last year, missed this year, but Ty's been out for the last three years. Uh, if you look these guys up, they have some videos of us out there fishing. Uh, Ty's a huge duck hunter, one of the best that I know. Um, just a ton of good quality outdoor stuff. So, I finally got that added. I'm going to be drinking beer throughout the entirety of this one, so it's not like I'm tying or anything, so i got some time to just sit back and BS a little bit on this. So we're going to go ahead and get through that, and I'm going to remove this one so I have a little bit more working room and explain what we have going with this. So basically this is just one by six pine. Um, if you want, you can fancy it up by all means, and you can do the, you know, you can do the oak, you can do the maple and stain it up and make it look all pretty if you want. I don't know. All I really care about is the brushes. So, functionality, that's all I'm looking for. You're not going to see a beautiful work of art here. This is no uh, um, engineering masterpiece by any means. But what it is is functional, it gets the job done, and you can build one of these really cheap. Um, so, without any further BSing, I'm going to go ahead and get started in this. I have a bunch of notes on the side here, so I'm hoping that I get everything right. I'm hoping that I hit everything that I want to, um, but I, I may miss something. So if I do, just shoot me a message and uh, I'll, I'll be able to answer anything that you have. I have all the dimensions and everything wrote down. I pre-built one of the, well this is, I have one built over there so everything is copied perfectly. We'll see, there have been a couple of PBRs involved so I may mess a few things up but you're not going to see it. I'm going to edit through all of that stuff anyhow. It's going to look perfect so this is exactly how I intended it to be. Anyhow, no more nonsense. Seriously, we're going to get into building this thing. 
So, to start off on this, you're going to have your two upright pieces, and you're going to have your bottom piece right here. Your bottom piece, this is a 20 inch piece of white pine. Like I said, you can do oak, maple, cherry if you want to fancy it up, but I went on the cheap, so that's what we're doing here. And then this is going to be our left hand piece, well, right probably as the viewer's seeing it. So I'm going to have a 10 inch piece there and a 10 inch piece here. Now, because you have 20 inches, you got 3 quarter and 3 quarter, that's going to make 21 and 3 quarter, which is going to be your back brace, which is going to sit right here. After that, you're going to have a piece that's going to be on a hinge that's going to sit right like this, right here in the center. This is going to be your working platform. This is 17 inches, and I'm going to offset it, and I'll explain a little bit why I offset it in a little bit. But I'm going to go put this stuff together, that way you can have a better idea of what we're going to be working with. And then once I get back, we'll go into some more details. Alright, so as you can see, we have the skeleton of this thing built. Um, it's, like I said, just one, uh, one by six pine. Um, we've got the brackets on here. Let me see if I can find them here. Um, no, nope, I don't have them here on the bench. I should have, but I probably used them to put this together. Here they are, these little silver inside pieces. These are the, they're just a 90 degree bracket. I used to hold those two together. It makes it really sturdy. And then this portion up top has a dual purpose. It really shores it up. It keeps the top from kind of wanting to bow in on you. And also we're gonna put our hinge right here on the inside. And then speaking of the hinges, this is what we're gonna use right here to allow this portion to go up and down to remove um, you'll be able to, it'll be like a working platform, but then once you really want to start spinning everything together and allowing the brush to really fill out, um, you'll be able to drop that down and work with it that way. I'll go through the rest of the materials at this point that we're going to be using. Um, this is just a 916 socket with a uh, uh, drill bit attachment on it. Um, that's basically all we're going to use just to spin our... Uh, our brushes. This is a one and one eighth inch hole saw. We're going to take this for the part on this side here. It's usually on this side when I'm looking at it. Um, it's going to be on this side here. We're going to put a one and one eighth inch hole through this side. We're going to put a one and one eighth inch outside diameter bearing on the inset of that hole that we drill. We're going to use a two inch by let me see if I have it here. Let me see. It's going to be a two inch long um, 16 uh, NC is going to be your thread count for this. And we're going to use a 3 8 Let me make sure that I get this right. We're going to use a 3 8 drop in anchor, which is, let me see if I can find that here. Yep. Here's your drop in anchor. And all this is really is it's going to sit in the, I'm going to get this out of the way, that's really awkward. This is, this is going to sit inside of our 1 and 1 8 inch dial. And then it has the threaded portion that the 16NC is going to take on that 3 8, 3 8 bolt. So we're going to set this in and this is going to be our rotational piece. Um, I alluded to the fact that we're going to use a 1 and 1 8 inch dial on outside and inside with, with the bearing. And then we're also going to use these eyelets. One of them is closed, one of them is open. The open one is going to go on the inside portion or the rotational portion. The closed one will go on the fixed portion which will be on the right side. Um, on top of that we're going to use uh, 5 16 dowels and this is going to hold our platform up. It's going to hold our hinge up when we swing it up and we have a working platform. This is going to hold that up. So I'm going to have two 16 or two 5 16 dowels that I'm going to throw on this side and then for storage uh, you can just plant these anywhere. I mean just use a 5 16 drill bit um, and then just set those on the side but it'll make more sense here once I put everything together. So 
Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take and I'm going to install the hinge portion of this. So on the hinge portion, before I do that, I want to explain a little bit of how I've, I came to the heights that I'm using. And my, I got to go get the drill bit. I left it out here. So, unless you're using an 18 volt DeWalt, it's probably not going to be exactly the same for you that it is for me. If you're using a 12 volt, it's, the, the heights are going to be off. If you're using Milwaukee, whatever you're using, um, it's going to be a little bit different. But, I'll bring this one up. Eh, no, we'll leave that one. Um, Basically, when I'm running this, is I want this to be at the exact height that this drill bit sits at. So I can just have it sitting right on the bench. I don't have to worry about balancing the bit, anything like that. All I do is squeeze the trigger and we're good. So now we're going to use this 1 and 1 8 hole. And it is going to be, let me make sure that I got this right, 2 and 9 sixteenths from my working side. So this is my working side right here. I'm coming over two and nine sixteenths, and I'm going to drill this hole. I drill that hole, and then that's going to be the rotational portion of this dubbing brush. Um, on the other side, same thing, two and nine sixteenths from the working side right here. I'm just going to go ahead and put this in right now. This is going to be a stationary eye. All I'm going to do is try not to knock that over and cause a big mess. I'm just going to, I already have all my pilots and everything drilled, and I'm just going to thread this in here, and this is going to be the stationary portion. Of my kit. So now what I'm going to do, actually before I go and do that, I'm going to rewind a little bit here and talk about the platform. So on this platform, you're going to see that I'm going to have holes drilled, and this isn't this is the other platform. This isn't the one that I'm going to use. Um, I have the holes drilled for where my hinge is going to sit, and then I have a blue line drawn because I have the blue line because um, I have the hinges on here. The hinges are going to push this out a quarter of an inch, so I'm going to have a quarter of an inch gap sitting right here that I'm not going to be able to that I have to factor in to this portion right here. So that's why you know we got the five and a half inch uh, portion of wood that we're going to be using. All I did was move this over one eighth inch from the center line. So my center line on five and a half is going to be two and three quarter. I pushed that out to two and what is that, two and seven eighths? I have it wrote down there. I don't know. It's <laughs> no, no difference. Really, I mean, an eighth of an inch isn't going to really make a whole big difference, but math in public is not my strong suit, so I'm not going to try and do this math and embarrass, my, embarrass myself. Just know that you have to come over an eighth inch. You don't really have to, but it centers it up. But come over an eighth inch from your center line at two and three quarter, and then uh, by the time you factor in that quarter inch for the hinge, your center line is going to be sitting right where you want it. So there's that line that I have drawn. And then what I did on this side was I just took just a half inch chisel and I just worked this through here and I um, made that, I don't know, what is it, probably quarter of an inch deep. I just took that quarter inch and ran it right through there nice straight line all the way through and then this is the portion that I'm going to be working with all I did afterwards was I took a nice palm sander and I just leveled that out so when this sits here the hinge portion is going to be flush with this with both of my eyes but this level or this bevel that I cut into this is going to allow me to put material in there so when I'm working with it it's going to be nice and even, nice and flush. So what I'm going to do is go and put the hinge on this. I'm going to attach everything here, and then we'll speak a little bit more. And also, I'm going to cut this hole, the one and one eighth hole in here, 
and then I'll get to speaking about the dials and how I put everything together. So we'll be back in a second and we'll talk on that after another PBR. All right, so now we have our hinge section put on right here. And to hold this hinge section up, I have that 5 sixteenths dowel. I cut these at two and a half inches. You can cut them a little bit shorter if you want. It's fine. Um, I just put two 5 sixteenths holes to hold them right there. When I'm, when I'm not using them, when I am using them, I'm flipping this up. And really, you can get away with just doing one of these. This is really difficult doing this where the camera can see it. But these just hold my table in place. I'm just going to get away with doing one of them because it's awkward doing it this way. But this holds my table in place. This holds my platform right where I want it. And um, I know it's tough to see where the bevel and everything on this portion that I sanded down is. But the center line runs right to my stationary section and then we're going to work on doing this section right here. This is going to be our section that rotates on us. So to do this, what we're going to do is this is just a one and one eighth inch, um, just a bearing. And then the inside is three eighths inch, which is going to fit our bolt that we're going to use for this. This is going to sit in there, and this is basically just to keep this from moving around. And you can see it's a pretty snug fit. I mean, there's a little bit of play to it, but for the most part, um, it is pretty solid. And this is basically, like I said, just to keep everything stationary. Um, there's a little bit of wobble to it, but I mean, we're not, we're 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 not uh, exactly. Uh, milling pieces that are going to be used on uh, aircraft or spaceship or anything like that. I mean, we're just making dubbing brushes, so if there's a little bit of wobble to it, I'm not getting too worked up about it. I got sawdust all over the place here, which is different from what it normally is, is feathers. But anyhow, to continue on with this, I'm going to put this bearing section in this recessed portion that I drilled out right here you can see the hole right there that I'm going to be using and this like I said is going to be the rotational por portion of my brush boy that thing is on there well, there we go okay, I can still get some glue out of this I'm just going to take a little bit of Gorilla Glue and I'm just going to take it and put a bead right around this bearing before I put it in here. So then all I'm going to do is just push that into where it's recessed and it's going to sit just how I want it. Now I have a one and one half inch section of one and one eighth inch dial that we're going to use and then there's also a one inch section. The one inch section is going to sit and act as basically a spacer. So I'm going to put this section right here. It's going to sit on this back side and it's going to take up the gap that I have with this two inch bolt. So now the best way to do this is to take your drill bit and this is going to be, what is it? Oh, I want to say 764 so I may be wrong. If you're uncertain or if you're using the actual sizes that I'm using, just shoot me a message. It is, yeah, 764. So I'll just take a 764 drill bit and I'll run this as it's sitting in here. Oh, that wasn't supposed to happen. That wasn't supposed to happen. that knocked out. I have to re-glue that. But like I was saying, a 764 drill bit, and this is the best way, unless you have a drill press to where you can be really precise in drilling these holes, um, the best way that I found to do it is 
to take your drill bit and run it right through here and just bring it out the back side on this. So what I'm going to do now is just go ahead and take and drill these out and when I come back I'll explain a little bit more as to how this thing all fits together. All right. So with our one inch, one and one eighth inch dial that is going to go on the back side, it's a three eighths bit. I don't know why I looked at the wrong portion there, um, but it's a three eighths bit that you just throw right through here, sits on this side, and like I said, it acts as a spacer, and then your two inch bolt comes right through. There we go. And everything sits how we want it. Now what we're going to do is I took the one and one eighth inch dial that's a one and a half inches long and I'm going to drop this um, anchor in and it's going to sit with probably a quarter of an inch, res or um, not recessed, I'm going to have a quarter of an inch sticking out on this. So now like I said, if you have a drill press to where you can drill this thing perfectly to where it's nice and even, that's perfect. That's exactly what you want. But like I said, I mean, if there's a little bit of a wobble in there, it's not going to make a huge difference either way. Um, I've spun probably three or four dozen brushes up, and that little bit of wobble, if it's not truly centered, um, doesn't really make a huge difference. So. Now what we're going to do on this one is I'm going to put everything together and I'm going to actually do a brush so you guys can see how this whole setup works. Alright, so we got everything set up here for a olive marabou brush. All I did was just clip these portions here that I would typically just throw away after I sort through my tails or if I call through a package and there's just no usable portion on it. I just cut these and I lined them up on the brush. I took medium dubbing brush wire. You can use small if you want. It's more set up for your shorter brushes that don't have a ton of bulk to them. Use the medium. It seems to be a little bit better and it won't break as easy. I mean, you can really wrench on this stuff, and uh, it will, it, it'll, it'll respond and it'll hold well. So I just tied onto my portion right here, my fixed portion, my fixed loop portion. Loop being this loop right here. This is my open-ended portion to where I'm going to peel the brush off of, and you'll see that in a second. This is my rotational portion, and we have everything set up. And then I just doubled everything over to go over top of that. I rolled my wire around and now we're ready to start rotating on this. So all I'm going to do is just rotate and you can see this stuff right here is starting to get captured a little bit so I should shift everything over just slightly but everything on this side is going to be clean because I have probably an inch right there of just excess brush so all I'm going to do is just turn this drill on now and uh, start working this. where everything's going to start rotating. I'm not worried about, you can see, I mean, it just looks like a big loop right now. I'm not too worried about that. What I want to see is all of this stuff back here start to wrap around and loop like this one's doing. It's going to take a little bit for it to get there where everything starts to starts to turn around and starts to get trapped trapped by this brush and once I start seeing it twist right here I know I can stop and then what I want to do on this working platform is I'm just going to take my trusty dubbing brush here or my dubbing teaser my toothbrush and just pick this stuff out you're gonna lose a little bit I mean it's gonna it's going to wind up being a little bit messy, but at the end of the day, this brush is going to wind up looking really clean because you're going to have some nice portions here of some really nice thick when, when you when you palmer this stuff. I got a couple sparse sections right there, but that's all right. We'll still be able to use it. 
still an inexact science that I'm working through here. But now that I have everything kind of brushed out, everything sitting how I want it, I'm going to get this hooked back up. weird working backwards usually on the camera side of this all right that's enough there we go now I'm just gonna drop this down and all I'm gonna do you can see that slack in there all I'm gonna do is just peel up that slack tighten up pretty good here now the last thing that I'm going to do is I'm working with this I'm just going to move everything you can see I'm kind of peeling everything back that way I know what my tie-in section is going to be if all of my materials are moving back this way I know that I'm going to start tying in from this section and everything when I tie it in is going to fold over toward the back of the hook so as I rotate this I'll work through. Oh, I forgot to glue that one in. We'll get that. Maybe we'll edit that one out. Probably not. Alright. So Minus me gluing that portion in right there. We're good to cut this one out and you can see we have a nice clean dubbing brush. Stay there. We'll get that one glued into place here before. So all I do is I just cut that end, I work this portion off, and there you go. We've got a nice clean dubbing brush of material that I typically would have just thrown away and I'm telling you that, that brush right there, as far as palmered hackle goes, is so much thicker. You use so much less material. Get this out of the way so I can sit here and talk to the camera the rest of the way. But this section, as far as when you tie this in, it doesn't look like a whole lot right now. Um, when you tie this portion in, you can it, it builds so much bulk because it's the... It's the aftershaft fibers that you typically wouldn't be able to use because the stems are so thick and not pliable that you just throw this stuff away when you're palmering. But when you have this on a dubbing brush and everything's loose and everything's able to be moved, this, this gets so thick and you wind up using less material, even less material seeing as this is material that you would have typically thrown away. Um, this is what I use I got stuff flying all over the place. This is what I use for the Octobers, um, for Kelly's uh, pearl necklace. I think I got one sitting right here. The pearl necklace, the, the flapper tail on the back, instead of using two or three wraps, or two or three plumes of marabou to get that flapper tail, you probably take about four or five wraps of this. You run it up front, you throw it over the back, you just peel everything back toward the hook, and that's what you get, that nice thick flapper tail. Um, on my landing strips, the Brazilians, five or six wraps of this, you can throw a little bit of flash in there, and I'm, I'm telling you, you can, knock, you can knock a fly out in maybe ten minutes, and that's including the articulation portion of it. Um, if you guys are using the 18 volt, I was going to go through and do um, like all of the exact measurements as to where the hinges go for the... For the working platform and all that stuff if you're using the 18 volt i have them all wrote down here um shoot me a message and i'll i'll let you know exactly how far to put your hinges down where your platform should be so on and so forth but if uh, i realize that if somebody's using something different all of those measurements aren't going to mean a thing because like i said you want it to just be sitting right here and that's where your your rotation starts is right here so if you're using a 12 volt it's going to be down here in Milwaukee wherever it's going to be 
So I didn't really see a whole lot of point in taking all that time. If you want the measurements and you're using the 18 volt, let me know and I'll, I'll have it dialed in perfectly for you. But outside of that, I know the video is only going to wind up being probably a half, half an hour, but I've been at this for about two, putting everything together and measuring and all that stuff. And I'm ready to go back to tying flies. This is not my forte at all. But if you have any questions, uh, comments, if you have, you see anything on the here that you feel would be better if I did it a different way or whatever it may be, let me know. I'm, I'm, up, I'm up to, uh, to hearing from you guys, and I know that there are people out there a hell of a lot smarter than me that will make this a lot easier, I'm sure. But that being said, this is the dubbing brush tool that I came up with. You can do it relatively cheap, and as you can see, this is all material that would have been thrown away that we're now using and turning into other flies. And I think the Palmer section is better. The rainbow riffle section to where it's just ice dub, hair's ice dub, and shaggy dub, you can get probably four flies out of that section and it takes two minutes to put that together. Um, I'll start messing around with some other stuff as far as, man, can't get my hat to fit, as far as um, other other patterns and everything, but right now these are the only ones that I've found that have a really good use for these brushes, but I'm sure as I go on I'll learn some more and I'll experiment with some stuff and probably find some more things that work. As I do, I'll put them on here and you guys can uh, give me some feedback on what you think about it. If you have something that you feel it would work good, let me know. I'll give it a shot and we'll kind of go back and forth and get things dialed in. But enough rambling. I hope that this makes a little bit of sense. I hope that uh, when I edit this it comes through all right and it's not just me rambling and putting stuff together and being confusing. But as always, thanks for watching. If you guys have any questions or comments, leave them with me and I'll get back to you. But uh, we'll catch you on Wednesday on the next fly. Thanks.